Andatzel. If you found this video, you're probably wondering how to convert your rear sump to a front sump on your M111. Let's get into it. All right, you guys, so I am swapping an M111 into a 190E, which is a very popular swap in the world of Mercedes. Chances are you're probably doing something similar into a chassis that has a steering box that is not able to fit the rear sump over the top of that and you need to convert to a front sump. So what I have here is an oil pan out of an earlier M111 model, which if you are doing this swap and you went with a 202 chassis or SLK chassis that had a front sump already, you're probably good and it's probably not your situation. But in my case, I took this motor out of a 203 chassis uh, C230 compressor coupe and we need to convert it to a front sump. So the oil pan to do that is right here, part number R111-014-0802. So again, this would be found on 202s and SOKs. I forget, uh, what is that, R R171? Um, so that is what we're gonna be using and I basically just bought this used off a of factory car. I also have a fresh one that uh, one of you guys sent me. Daniel, shout out to you. I don't know if I'm going to use this. I think I'm just gonna stick with the OEM one just because machining is probably that much better compared to an aftermarket one, even though this one's tempting because it's nice and fresh and clean. But I'll just stick with the OEM. I'll get this one cleaned up in a second. But what we've taken off is over here. That's our old rear sump oil pan. It's so dirty on the bottom that I can't even see the part number on it. But if I can find that on... Uh, EPC, then I will post it up for you guys now. The other thing you're going to do while you're in here is you need to convert the oil pump because this is the oil pump that comes out. It basically has a long tube that's gonna go through the baffle on this side and collect from the rear of the motor. With you switching to the front sump, you need one that has the pump ready to pick up right here. So. Part number for this pump is 606-181-0701, all right? That's what you need. Uh, I'll also pop up the O-ring part number. It's an L-ring part number or a factory part number. I forget what it is off the top of my head. It's like a seven digit or so number from L-ring and then I'll pop up the factory number as well. Mine is still in okay shape and we're gonna be using a special uh, sealant that I'll talk to you guys about in a bit called Blue Hylomar. At the same time while doing this, it's probably a good idea for you to replace your rear crankshaft seal or rear main seal as they call it. They actually updated the part number on this and changed the design of it. This one is like basically a formed gasket uh, and it's still in good shape on the interior here. This wasn't leaking when I took it out. Um, but the updated one is all a flat aluminum face on here, which is kind of weird. Like it doesn't have any grooves for you to fit sealant on. You basically just apply it to the flat surfaces and the engine is also a flat surface. So I don't know, I, I wasn't really a fan of that. So I figured I would just stick with this because even on the M113s, what I'm experienced with more so than these is all the engine housing uh, or rear uh, crankshaft housings have a groove that you put your silicone into. So I just thought it was kind of weird that they don't have that on the updated part. But so seal, or I should say just our gasket for our engine is inside of here. Big shout out to FC Piero. You guys have heard me talk about them supporting the project and sending this over, but this is a Cortico seal. Let's see if it's got the part number on here for you guys. Looks like 423983P and uh, list C180, which is a 1.8 liter version of the M111, two liter and 2.2 liter. So that would be 111.920, uh, 4041, 60 or 61. Those are different types. There's, there's a lot of different types of M111s guys. So. You can look on the block to find uh, where yours is or on the uh, bell housing rather. Um, don't know if it's visible right now being upside down on mine, but it's at the top on one of these sides over here. Yes, it is visible on mine, but uh, mine is a 981. So is that listed on here? No, it's not. So anyways, 
it still works though. This is basically compatible on all the M111s. They didn't change the gasket design. And I believe this is even referenced, it's like a short version of a 606 gasket, kind of the same exact design, just shorter obviously for the four cylinder. Um, but yeah, that is what you need essentially. So we got our oil pan covered, our rear crankshaft seal covered, and the sealant I'm gonna be using that I mentioned earlier is this stuff. This is blue Hylomar. I have not used it yet, but this stuff is like the bee's knees from what I hear around the interwebs and from OG Mechanics that talk about it online. This is a non-hardening compound that essentially can seal out water, moisture, oil, everything. And you basically apply it let it uh, aerate for a little while to dissolve all the solvent or dissipate all the solvents in it. And after about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you can then uh, seal whatever you're doing and it becomes kind of tacky and it never hardens. So the next time you're going to replace whatever you're doing, uh, you don't have to worry about trying to scrape off a bunch of like hardened silicone or whatever else. The cleanup's supposed to be a lot easier and uh, it's just supposed to be really, really good at what it does. So. We're gonna be using basically a thin bead of this around the uh, oil pan and then also around our rear main housing and uh, a little bit on our O-ring for our oil pump as well. So I think a little bit goes kind of a long way with these and I believe that's actually what they use on these um, gaskets that's the blue material i'm pretty sure it's something similar because you can see the residue on the oil pan here basically has that same blue gasket and this is very similar to what this is although probably not quite similar because obviously this is hardening to an extent but i would assume it's probably a similar compound of some kind so anyways we're going to be adding that into the mix just to give us a seal, a nice chance of seal. So that's it, Blue High Lamar. I'm excited to try this stuff out. I think it's gonna be a new go-to for me when it comes to whatever sealing I need uh, on different various projects. So I always typically use uh, Permatex Right stuff and that is great, don't get me wrong, but if I can get with something that is a non-hardening and easy to clean up, I think I would uh, rather try this. So. We'll try it out, but let's get into it, uh, and I will give you guys all the torque specs as we get through this. I've already cleaned up uh, this side pretty good. Actually, my stepdad did when he was here. Mike cleaned this up pretty good when he was here and I was doing everything else, uh, but I still need to clean up our used OEM oil pan, and then uh, need to get all this prepped for installation. Um, you have a bunch of E8 bolts, you have E10s and E12s uh, for the oil pan and a couple different lengths. So we will get into those, but yeah, just a lot of uh, cleaning up before we get started. All right, guys, I've got our surface all prepped where I want to put the oil pan, or I mean, sorry, I've got our surface all prepped where I want to put our oil pump down. So I'm gonna go ahead and take our blue Hylomar and just lay a small bead around this surface here. Okay, and then I'll essentially just wipe that down. Make sure my fingers are clean. But you essentially just kind of spread it into place. And then essentially, when this starts to dissipate that solvent, it'll become stickier and stickier. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a tiny bit on the uh, oil pump as well, just around that surface, and then drop it on here. All right guys, been about 10 minutes. Stuff is uh, set up by now, so let's go ahead and get our pump in here. Don't forget, obviously, you gotta put our chain on, so I'm gonna try to get that situated. All 
And I'm going to throw a little bit of Loctite on our bolts as well. So let's do that. Okay, nice angle up a little bit. Okay, those are down hand tight. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead need to situate all of our bolts here and then I'll torque these down and these as well. Okay guys, now torque specs for these. I actually posted them on my story because it's just an easy place to put. So, um, oil pump to crankcase for hexagon bolts, 25 Newton meters. For Torx head, like we have 18 Newton meters. So, those will go 18 Newton meters. The oil pan for M6 bolts, 10 Newton meters. For M8s, 25 Newton meters. Um, that seems kind of a lot. So, We'll start with 10 Newton meters, see how they feel. Uh, for these ones, I don't know what these are. These are like M5s, I think. They're pretty small. So I'm gonna see how they feel once I start tightening them up and probably leave them be. Okay guys, oil pump bolts, T45, 18 Newton meters, which is about 13.4 foot pounds. Oh, we're already there. good let's go ahead and uh, move on all right guys what's going on checking in it's been a while for me not a long time for you guys but it's been probably over a week or so since we last filmed uh, with the m111k here and our oil oil pump and uh, pan swap and I picked up a few pieces because after basically seeing that our old uh, what do you want to call this uh, rear crank cover or rear main seal cover was not a replaceable gasket style cover. I ordered the updated part number, which is like this, which we'll be able to fit our seal into. It's a little bit different. It does not have a groove for the seal to fit into, but I don't think that'll be a problem. Uh, and then I also, since I figured I was gonna be waiting for parts, decided to pick up the O-ring for our oil pump. So I'm gonna basically undo what I did here, but it's okay, it doesn't take too long. Uh, I won't bore you guys with that, but I just wanted to show you the part number for it. 
this is an updated part number and it was hard to find to be honest it wasn't showing up like in the normal uh looking through like all data and stuff like that it just it wasn't populating for some reason the old number and it was saying it's no longer available but it still is so there it is for you hopefully that helps um and yeah i'm gonna go ahead basically just throw that back in and then we'll pick up once i finish on that so we can correct uh our rear main seal situation and uh throw in an oil pan okay guys one job i'm gonna do real quick is uh throw in our rear main seal so basically just wood is your friend here uh, i'm gonna use a block of wood to pound this actually i'm gonna try to find a thinner piece but yeah block of wood to basically pound it out with a hammer and uh that's how i do things it's easy simple All right guys, seal is in place, so it should be good to go. And it's at this point, you guys, that I wanna say that I am a firm believer everything happens for a reason. And thank God I decided to get another O-ring because, you know, when I was installing this, for some reason, it was sitting just fine and then all of a sudden the oil pump didn't want to sit flush. And after cranking it down and tightening everything and putting everything back together, I was going to sleep that night and I just couldn't help but to think, did the O-ring dislodge itself before I put the pump down and that's why it didn't want to sit? Because normally it should just sit flat no problem. It shouldn't, shouldn't be moving around. And uh, yeah, that's our answer right there. Thank God I am doing this. There is no way that thing would have sealed and we'd be chasing issues and potentially, I mean, could have blown the motor like that. Just letting in too much air, aeration into the oil is not a good thing. Wow. I am glad we are doing this. Um, I was also very curious, what does our blue Hylomar stuff feel like? And yeah, it's definitely still pliable. It's uh, like, almost like a rosin. Like, uh, I don't know, but that part's cool to see, I guess. But yeah, wow. I'm glad I'm putting a new O-ring in it. All right, guys, new O-ring is in. A little de electric grease on the O-ring itself just to keep it in place while I flip it upside down. And then a thin line of the blue Hylomar around the edge, just, you know, for good measure. Why not uh, clean up both services beforehand? So let's uh, take two and I'm gonna be extra cautious throwing this on eyeball aligned horizontally with where this is gonna seat because uh, yeah, we're not doing that again. All right guys, back to where we started uh, a few minutes ago. Everything is torqued down. These are 18 Newton meters again. Um, and these I basically just cinched down as tight as I could holding on to a quarter inch ratchet um, just at basically the base. So just like this, basically tight as I can go like this without overdoing it. And they're plenty tight. I did Loctite all of them now since it's final install. Um, you don't really need to, it's not in the book, but why not? If we're in here, might as well throw a little bit on, doesn't hurt. Um, so yeah, moving on, I'm gonna do rear main seal here and uh, we will move forward with our oil pan. All right guys, and there is my rear main seal with the uh, Hylomar paste on there. I've let it uh, evaporate uh, or aerate, I guess, whatever you wanna call it, um, to outguess whatever chemical that's in it that you need to do, but anyways, 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try to slide this on to the crankshaft, make sure our sealing surface on the other side is uh, nice and clean one more time, and then I'll go ahead and slide this on. All right, well, I was going to record that for you, but <laughs> that went much smoother and more quickly than I expected. Uh, I basically just kind of held this down on the gasket, um, or I guess on the uh, crankshaft, put a little bit of pressure on the seal so that it could have enough room to kind of get over the bottom as well. Uh, once I did that, it kind of just slipped on the bottom. I used a little bit of silicone spray um, on the inside of the seal before putting it on, and then basically just lined up our two dowels, and then it just started sliding on. So it happened in like five seconds, so I'm sorry. I was gonna record that, but didn't happen. So uh, anyways, I think we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my bolts in. All right, guys, that is torqued down. Uh, all of those are E10s, and I torqued them down to 88 and a half inch pounds or 10 newton meters. I just couldn't fit my uh, bigger um, torque wrench down in here, so I had to use the little guy, fit in between a little valley there. So uh, that is done. We are making progress now for the oil pan. All right, guys, and moving on, I was just about to uh, throw a bunch of gasket maker on here, but I remembered this actually uses factory gasket for the oil pan. Uh, this can only go one way. I believe it goes this direction since it has a little circle over there on that side, which you see over here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put basically just a thin line of our same gasket maker um, on the bottom here. And then I'll do the same thing for the oil pan itself. I just clean that up. Doesn't need to be perfect, but Pretty clean, clean enough. So uh, let's go ahead, set this on after I get that uh, thin line of Hylomar, and then we'll do the same for the top side. Well guys, we certainly seem to be running into an issue either with this or the oil pump itself. Huh. You can only think that it would be this, because the oil pump should be designed with that in mind, but it seems like it's hitting on the oil pressure sensor, or oil level sensor. Um Let's test the other pan since it doesn't have it in it right now. Not, oh, yep, it is indeed the oil pickup tube. Just barely hitting. Basically, it's hitting right where that bolt is threaded into for the oil level sensor. So I wonder if that is a piece that we need to trim off. Interesting. All right guys, well, I don't really have uh, the right tools to do this job right now. I'm kind of thinking the best way of cleanly cutting this would, would almost be like a, like a brake line tube cutter or just a tube cutter, whatever you want to call them. I think that would be the easiest way if it can get through something like this. I think it could. Um, I would just need the right size for it, but it basically only needs, you know, maybe quarter inch off of there, half an inch to be safe. 
and I think would be in the clear. So uh, I will formulate a game plan on how to do that. So. He helped me pull up the diagrams as well and double check that our oiling tube was in fact a press fit. So I put a bolt in the top so I could have a good gripping surface and then just, yeah, just wiggled it out. So we're going to chop this thing by probably about a quarter of an inch, half an inch to be safe. Pop that back in and then luckily because we're using the blue Hylomar and we have an actual traditional gasket, this is still good to throw right on. So I'm just going to fix this real quick. Pop on our oil pan and we should be good to go. All right guys, that is cut. Just uh, sanded it down, smoothed it out. A little bit of carb cleaner, cleaned it up and uh, we're gonna pop this thing back in. Okay, that is not going anywhere. So, let's do our oil pan. Alrighty. Should be good. All right guys, pan is laid down, most of the bolts are in, but I wanted to point out another thing that you're gonna run into. Uh, the bolts, obviously, that come off of the um, rear sump are gonna be a lot different. Um, not a lot different, actually, excuse me. But there's gonna be four, uh, actually, how many total? One, two, three, six long bolts that come out of the fr uh, rear sump pan and you no longer need those. You only need three of the long bolts and then you'll need um, about what one, two, three, uh, M6 by 1.0, uh, and about 40 millimeters is what these are. So, uh, luckily, I had these laying around from numerous junkyard visits and etc. over the years. I have a healthy <laughs> stocking of uh, basically factory bolts, all different types of stuff. I always keep like every bolt I ever get because. It just always ends up coming in handy, I swear. It's like the one thing you should always keep. Um, not the one thing, but it just definitely comes in handy, so I always hang on to them. But anyways, uh, those are a good fit. So I got one, two, three of those that luckily I had laying around perfect size. So the rest of them are all in, um, and that's about it. There's four of the bigger bolts. I think these are M8s, and those still get used exactly the same. So. Now I'm gonna to torque everything up. Uh, I gotta look again. I know all the M6s I think are 10 Newton meters and the M8s I think are a little bit higher, like 12 or 15. So I'll double check and I'll let you guys know here in a second. All right, so there it is on my old pictures. I don't know if you guys can see that on the phone, but yes, uh, 10 Newton meters for the M6s and 25 Newton meters for the M8s. So that's about uh, 88 inch pounds for the M6s and somewhere I'll, I'll tell you guys in a second what the inch pounds is for the m8 it's probably going to be like 100 and i don't know 20 or so but we'll see all right guys she's all torqued down everything is good to go and with that i think it's officially a wrap uh those smaller bolts again are 88 and a half inch pounds or 10 newton meters 
the two or four bigger bolts M8s are 25 newton meters or 18.4 foot pounds, 18 and a half to be safe. So that is all good. We are completed. Oil pan swapped and ready to move on with the rest of our refresh on this M111K. But that'll go ahead and do it for this video. Hope this is really helpful for those of you W201 guys that are swapping this into a 190E or 124 guys swapping into a, you know, whatever 124 chassis. Please uh, leave me a comment if you guys got any questions. And uh, yeah, look forward to hearing from you guys. And uh, leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video, if it was helpful for you. That's it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.